hey 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 you guys i am back with another video and today's topic we are talking all about the 13 things every woman should know by the time she turns 40. So this is gonna be a three-part series, you guys. It's all about girl talk. We're just gonna chit chat and give you some practical things that you can begin to work on. And, and listen, let's put this disclaimer out there. I am still a work in progress. I am no psychiatrist. I am no psychologist. I am just speaking on my own life experiences. So let's just get that out the way. So. So as I stated, this is going to be a part of my Girl Talk series on it's pretty much 15 things that every woman should know by the time she turns 40. So if that is something that interests you, make sure you turn on your bell notifications, make sure you hit that subscribe button and make sure you tune in every week because I'm trying something different. I'm posting my videos still twice a week, but it's at night. So make sure you turn on your bell notifications so that you will not miss out on another episode. So let's start out with number one. And y'all know I always have my journal. I always have a notebook because y'all know I will be all over the place. But the first thing I, I say that you should have some kind of good um, explanation about by the time you turn 40 is a good sense of having your money together like being able to handle money we all know like in our 20s and early teens and 30s you know things happen you know especially if you were in college you you carelessly some of us and I could say for myself I went crazy with the credit cards and Trust you me, I paid for it dearly. But what I'm saying is you want to be able to handle your money. So that is number one. I'm going to share with you five on this video, but this is a part of my series. And when I say handling your money, like get a, get a hold of your credit reports. You can pull your credit report from annual free annualcreditreport.com. Every year you can pull your um, credit to just to see. And then you can also use things like credit sesame or credit karma just to keep tabs on what's being put on your credit report because a lot of times sometimes our credit report can have mistakes on them but if you're not checking them regularly you are really going to you may be in for a surprise and it could be a way for you to increase your score by getting those things off there that does not belong there so when i say handling your money that means improving your credit score you should be at a place where you're you have a pretty good grasp on what's going on financially with you. So that's what I mean when I say handling your money. My next thing that every woman should know by the time she turns 40 is have a clear understanding about who you are as a person. And this is going to take some really digging deep. It's going to take you to really be honest with yourself. It is going to take some kind of like self-awareness. Um, by the time you reach 40, you should, I mean, we don't know everything and let's just make that disclaimer. I don't know everything, but I can say that I'm still a work in progress and that I know more about who I am as a woman today than I did in my twenties and my thirties. Like I look back at that young girl and she, she just she she just didn't understand and i'm not knocking myself because i will never do that i i know better now but i didn't know how to really love me unconditionally and i'm not talking about in an arrogant way i'm not talking about in a snottish way i'm talking about really having a genuinely healthy love for myself because for so long as a child growing up and even into my early adulthood you know, I'm just being honest. I suffered with low self-esteem and it was, it was, it was that growing up, I was always looked at as the strong one because I always planned things. I always had my stuff together. I was the one that people came to for advice. My girlfriends, they came to me for uh, relationship advice or just any type of relation, any type of advice. Um, my male friends, they came to me with their questions, my siblings. And, and anytime I had a problem, I was always looked at, just pray about it and you're strong, you can handle it. But here's what I want you to understand. When you are known as the strong one and you have your moment of weakness, 
it's hard for people to take you serious. Like they always just assume you're going to get it together. And so growing up with a low self-esteem, I overachieved in other areas. Like anything that I had in my power to do that would bring me attention. Like I was the captain of the cheerleader team for years. I made the all American cheerleader team. I was the, um, Sunday school secretary, junior choir director. I was even in college, I was vice president of various clubs. I traveled a lot speaking. So looking back on all of that, I had the accomplishments, the achievements. You know, I went to college, got my degree, got my master's degree. That was something I always wanted to do, but still, I was still struggling with my identity, struggling with self-worth, self-esteem. So I overachieved in other areas because I was lacking that love, that self-esteem that I needed. And basically self-esteem, what that is, is just really how you feel about yourself. And I, I remember, I'll share a story with you. I remember as a young girl, I was a late bloomer. You know, all the other girls in my class were developing and they were, had they big breasts and everything. And I'm still looking, walking around like with a training bra on. And I'm like, God, what is the problem? Like, I'm like seventh grade now and I still don't have no boobies. But it was the thing that I had to understand my body. God didn't give me bigger breasts. He didn't do that. He gave me a bigger bottom, but he didn't give me a bigger top. So I had to learn to appreciate my body figure instead of compare myself to all my other friends. You know, you know, at that time growing up, I always thought guys like girls with bigger boobs and bigger breasts and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I compared myself and I always felt like I wasn't good enough or I was not, um, worthy of the things that I desired. So I compared myself a lot. So growing older, getting older at the age I am now at 40, almost 43, I can say now that I understand myself more clearly as a woman. And that's where you have to get into a space. Stop comparing yourself to Instagram models and people on social media because Social media is just what it is. It's social media. It's entertainment. But it's not for you to pick yourself apart and compare yourself to the next woman. And so you have to get a clear understanding of who you are. And then my next tip is of everything, things women need to know by the time they turn 40 is learning how to say no. I'm telling you guys, I was that yes girl. Do y'all hear me? I was that girl that always wanted to say no. I didn't want anybody to be mad at me. I always wanted to make people smile, make people laugh. And sometimes I would say yes when really deep down I wanted to say no, but because I was afraid of the backlash, you know, family, friends, they always expected me to say yes. So learning how to say no, even in my business, I can't work with everybody. I have to learn how to say no because everybody doesn't deserve to work with me and everybody is not going to work with me. So I have to be able to learn how to say no. And now it comes a little easier. I don't explain myself no more. When I say no, that's what I mean. You know, I don't have to give you, I remember I used to just go through this long sob story. I can't do it because I don't have the money. I can't do it because I don't feel good, but I don't get paid until the, you know, it was all, I used to give a long list of why I couldn't do stuff. But now saying no is a whole lot easier than it was when I was younger. Saying no now, even sometimes having to say no to my children and I love them to death. They are, if you ask me, they are spoiled right. And it's not all based on me. Their dad spoils them, their grannies and grandpas spoils them, their uncles and aunts spoil them. So it's just not me. But saying no to them even sometimes was hard. And I still struggle with that sometimes because, you know, you want to give your children the best. But sometimes I do have to say no. And just like you, whether you're in business, whether you're at work with your coworkers, 
whether you're out and about, sometimes you just gotta say no. And believe it or not, when you start saying no to other people, you give yourself permission to say yes to yourself because you deserve that. You deserve to live a life of abundance. You deserve to live a life of joy. You only get one life. And I tell people at this age, I'm taking all the chances I can on myself. All the things I ever wanted to do, all the things that I put off because of this, because of that, I'm taking a chance. Whether I fall flat on my face, I don't care at this point because I will not leave this earth with all my gifts and talents on the inside of me. And I encourage you to start saying no. Just practice something small. It could be as much as um, somebody asking you to borrow $10. No, can't do it. And don't start explaining yourself. Just, no, I cannot do that. That's it. Don't go in no long stop story. Don't go in no why you can and why you should. No, 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 no. Practice that. No, no. No, no. Practice it again. No, no, no. You got it? Good. And the next thing you need to know by the time you turn 40, every woman should know, is being able to truly forgive yourself. And this one, oh my God, this one. Oh Lord, if you've been following me for some time, y'all know my story. I just did not understand for the life of me why God wanted me to forgive People that have hurt me, done me wrong, like really, like you want me to do what again? And it was, it was just, he had to take me on this long journey of discovery of why it is so important for me. Because if you think about it, you're still holding on to grudges of people that did you wrong in high school. Maybe you are like me and you are divorcee and you and your ex-husband are not together anymore. You holding on to all of that pain, it's not hurting him. It's hurting you. Because you know why? You still stuck in that pain as if it just happened yesterday. You got to get to a place. And this is where God had to really work with me. And this is nothing to do with my, my ex or anything like that. This is way before I even met my ex. I was very suicidal. And because of the things that happened to me in my childhood and things that have happened to me throughout my life, I found it very hard for me to forgive myself. Like what in the world possessed you to try to take your life? Like what was so bad that possessed you to try to kill yourself? And I beat myself up so much about that because I knew better. But when you are in those dark days, everything that you know and was taught go out the window. And I had to get to a place where I say, you know what? I had to truly dig deep to forgive myself because it wasn't the problem of me forgiving other people. It was forgiving myself that was the hardest part for me because it always replayed in my mind what happened to me, what was done to me. And I had to get out of that victim mentality. And when you've been in a victim state for so long, it is hard as hell to get out of. It's hard, you guys. Don't don't take it lightly, what I'm telling you. When you really sit down and start to go through your life, and when I say go through your life, I'm not talking about going back there and living in your past. I'm talking about getting clear on the things that have happened. And it wasn't until maybe like a few years ago that I reached back and got some of my journals, you guys. And I, I get emotional thinking about that, but... I looked back in my journal whew, of some of the things that happened to me in my childhood and I had suppressed them so, I suppressed them so much that I forgot about them. You know how when things bad happen to you as a kid, you suppress them because you're trying to protect yourself. And so years ago, going through my deliverance, going through my counseling therapy session, yes, I have a therapy. And I was reading some of the stuff that happened to me. And I was real young when this stuff happened to me. And I suppressed it and reading it, oh my God, I lost it. Because I was like, 
it makes so much sense why all these years I've been feeling unworthy, feeling like I wasn't good enough. You know, anytime I was in a relationship, I always felt like something was wrong with me. Like, what is wrong with me? Why I cannot have what I desire or anything like that. And it was clear to me. And when I tell you guys, I read those journals and I had to burn them because it was pain. And so I had to release myself from that little girl all those years of feeling like I wasn't worthy enough. I wasn't good enough unless I had a man on my arm. I wasn't worthy of success. Like I literally was afraid of success because I know I have so much talent and so much gift to offer to the world. I was literally like afraid of success. And it all went back to my low self-esteem from my childhood, from growing up, you know, things I saw as a kid that no child should ever see, you know, things that happened to me that I wouldn't wish on my, on anybody. And so what I'm saying to you is I had to dig deep. And what I'm telling you is sometimes you have to dig deep and go back to your childhood and figure out why you act the way you do, why you do the things you do. And doing that really start the process of healing for me and forgiving myself became that much more easier because now I understood it wasn't my fault of things that happened to me in my childhood. I had to release, like I had all these expectations growing up of how my, my siblings should treat me or how my dad should treat me. And I love my dad to death. I'm truly a daddy's girl, but a lot of things growing up that I saw as a child it hindered me when I started, you know, building and getting into relationship with men. It started, it started the process all over of me feeling hurt and all of that. If that makes sense, you guys, I'm trying to get it to you as best as I can. But when I started to forgive myself, it really took a lot of weight, a lot of burden off of my shoulder because I was living trying to have these big wild expectations of how I thought people should be, how I thought this should be. And I had to just release those unrealistic expectations and really get to the core of it. And it became so, I started writing, I started writing forgiveness letters to myself. I started writing forgiveness letters to people who have hurt me. Now, I will say this, you have to brace yourself because not everybody is going to respond to your forgiveness letter the way you want them to. So what I did, I sent a letter to people who have hurt me. I expressed how I felt about it, how they made me feel. Some of them I heard back from them. Some of them I never heard anything back from. And that's okay because me writing the letter wasn't about really them it was for me to kind of close that chapter in my life. And that's what I'm recommending for you to do. In order for you to have the life that you want, forgiveness has to be a part of your everyday life, your everyday ritual, because people are going to do some things that hurt you. And people are going to say some things that hurt you. And so as my daddy used to tell me as a young girl, baby girl, you got to get some tough skin. You got to learn how to um, shake the things, shake it off because people are going to say some mean things to you and people are going to hurt your feelings, but you can't take it personal. You say what you have to say, stand up for yourself. I'm not telling you to be no doormat or anything like that, but you have to build tough skin, especially in this day and age when you have social media. And I'll just say this, when I first began my online journey as a young 20 something year old girl, I took a lot of things to heart. I wore my emotions and feelings on my, on my shoulders because I just couldn't believe that people could be so mean, but then you have to really think about it. A lot of these things that people say to other people that are demeaning and, and mad and, you know, build up this reputation and talk about you and throw dirt on your name or whatever. Nine times out of 10, you're never going to meet these people. And half of these people that say all these cool things about you will never say that to your face. And then two, you have to be careful 
when you are putting things on social media, if it's something that you don't want nobody to know about years down the road, it's best to not even post it out there. Because hear me when I say people will screenshot, people will always remember, people will never let it down, but you have to be the bigger woman and know that when you are the woman that you know you to be true to be, you don't deserve, everybody doesn't deserve a response from you. You don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to give everything your attention. You have to pick and choose what your attention will go to. And so when you learn to forgive yourself, you learn not how to hold yourself hostage in mistakes from your past. Hold yourself in contempt that you can't ever make a mistake because as long as you're still breathing and living on this earth, you are going to make mistakes. And you got to understand when you learn better, you can do better. And that is all that I'm going to say about that. And yes, your girl be crying because I'm a big cry baby. But anyway... And my last and final tip for this video, remember this is part, this is a part one of a three part series of 15 things every woman should know by the time she turns 40. And like I said, if you're not 40, if you are still young, that means you got some work to do. And even if you are 40, like myself, 40 plus, you still a work in progress and there's always room for improvement. And so the next tip on what every woman should know by the time she turns 40 is how to let go, how to let go of your past, how to let go of mistakes, how to let go of relationships that didn't work out. And, and, and when I say let go, I, I'll give you a story. Y'all know I always have to tell you a story. And these are real life stories. These are nothing that I read out of a book. This is my experiences. Um, I remember growing up as a young girl. And you know how when you reach maybe like fourth, fifth grade, you start, you start feeling yourself. You know, you start, I don't know how to explain. You start getting interested in guys you, you you know that that time when you first realize you like somebody you know it i don't know how to explain it but you know i had the biggest crush on this particular guy in my classroom and i for the life of me i didn't know how to let go like it was like every time i saw him i had butterflies every time he said anything to me it was like i was gonna burst out of my whole entire body and for the life of me even he had girlfriends, he had, I mean, it was clear he wasn't interested in me, little old bitty me, but I just didn't know how to let go. And I'm going to tell you how I began to let go. I worked with him one summer in a summer program and he actually got on my last nerve. That's how I got over my crush, you guys. It's sad, but it's true. And so many times we as women, we hold on to whether it's a guy that we was dating, whether it's a friendship that we had and we keep trying to make excuses. Oh, she was probably sad the reason why she did me wrong. Or, you know, you just constantly make excuses when God is clearly showing you this friendship is not good for you. It's a toxic relationship. Or this marriage is not good. Well, not marriage, but this relationship is not good for you. Or even in business, this partnership is not great for you. But you're constantly making excuses like this is, they're just having a rough time. They didn't mean it. But they continuously showing you the bad habits, the bad things. You know, you ever been around somebody that every time you come with them with some good news, they'll find any little negative thing to throw up. Like you come with them and be like, Girl, I just bought me a cute little outfit and I'm going to be cute. And girl, when I go out, girl, I'm going to follow my next husband or whatever the case may be. And then you got this one girlfriend that always be like, girl, who, who you think you are? That, that outfit ain't even really cute. Like she got to say something nice, but then turn right back around and flip it or something nasty. Comment below if you ever had a friend like that. We all have. But 
clearly it's time for you to let that relationship go, let that friendship go, but you don't want to let it go because it's something that you truly, truly want. And God is clearly trying to show you, okay, Latursa, how many times is I'm going to have to show you this same thing? It's not working. It's not good. And me, for myself personally, I always try to see the good in people. Like you can be right there in my face. And you can do something dirty. Now, I'll tell you off about yourself, but I always try to see the good. That's how I was, especially in my younger days. I didn't want to hurt people's feelings. And I'll give you another example. Y'all know I always have stories, but I remember when I, I was in college. And if a guy was trying to talk to me and I didn't like him, I wouldn't be mean to him. But I would always give him a fake phone number. And I'd always like be vague i would brush him off but i wouldn't be as firm and he would study come back and come back and i'd be like man i don't really like him like that but you know how when a guy like you it makes you uncomfortable when you don't feel the same way that's how it was with me and so i had to get to the place where i say you know what if I'm not interested in you, I'd rather tell you up front than to lead you on. And that's what broke that cycle of me of letting go of being the nice girl, the yes girl all the time. Because I'm a very nice and hyper, hyper energetic <laughs> woman and I love to laugh. But at the same time, there comes a point when I have to let go and say no and be firm and not try to hold on to friendships and relationships that are no longer serving me. And that doesn't mean that you are a bad person because uh, a friendship end, because all friendships are not meant to be a lifetime. Some friendships are in your life to teach you something, just like some relationships. Listen, every guy you meet is not your husband. And I know for me, especially in my 20s, it was like I had my list and I was like, I got to be married by the time I'm 30. I want all my kids by the same man and we're going to get married and we're going to have a happy-go-lucky life and all of that. <laughs> Didn't quite work out the way I kind of hoped it would, but I had to let go of my ideal that I thought a marriage should be, my idea of what my life should look like. Only God has the full blueprint of how my life is going to walk out. Now, that doesn't mean you can't put in your petitions and you can't do all these things to God. But God has the perfect young man just for a little old bitty me in his timing. And so now at the age of 42, almost 43, I don't, I have my list, but I'm not just like, Oh my God, I'm, I'm 40 something. I'm past the age. If I could have any more kids, I, I want a husband. You know, I don't get jittery like that. I don't, I, it doesn't stress me or do anything like that. Like I get excited thinking about, you know, I'm, you know, I'm going to be married again. I get excited thinking about that, but it does not consume me. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's like I'm at a place of contentment, but I'm looking forward. Like, I'm excited. Like, don't get me wrong. I be thinking and I be talking God's head off about him. But I always tell God every night before I go to bed, tell my husband, I said, hello, and I'm praying for him. You know, things like that. But it's not to the point where when I was in my 20s, like, oh, my God, I got to get married. I got to do this by this time. And my clock is ticking. I want to have all my babies before the time I turn 30. I I don't do anything of that nature like that anymore. So those are my first tip, my first five tips of the three-part series of what every woman should know by the time she turns 40. So I hope something I said blesses you. I hope I didn't ramble too much, you guys. But remember, you are absolutely enough and everything that you need, it's already on the inside of you. So God bless, and I'll see you soon. Mwah.